I think most people in the golfing community know that Tiger Woods has changed his swing over four times throughout his golfing career, and we all know how well that turned out for him. So 30 days ago, I embarked on a journey to see exactly how far I could get with changing my swing if I worked on it for 30 minutes at least every single day for 30 days. Can you change your swing in just one month? Stay tuned, because we're going to talk about that in today's video. Let's do it right now. Before we get started into the video, I do want to know from all of you down that lens, are you working on any swing changes right now? What are you specifically working on and how long have you been working on them? I went to my coach and we specifically highlighted a few things that really needed to improve in order for me to consistently strike the ball as well as I would like to. So let's grab a video of a swing that I took for myself, uh, let's say 45 days ago. All right, as we take the club away, I'm just going to speed through this. So there's a couple of things that we were noticing uh, when we get to the top of the backswing. The main thing that we were noticing is I wasn't getting enough rotation into my hips and I was not getting enough rotation deep into my waist, right? So I wasn't getting fully rotated uh, with my swing. That was the one main thing that we noticed was a pretty big issue. So if we look at where the club is at, because I wasn't rotating, that was causing me to come very steep and over the top. And as we see, that club and my hands are coming through my shoulder line, and that is causing the club to get uh, out in front of my hands, causing me to early release, causing me to stand up, and I'm getting too close to the ball, and obviously delivering the handles high at impact. And as we can see from this one, we got the hosel coming in there, not making a very good contact, and I was struggling with this being the worst part of my swing itself. If I'm gonna make a swing change, it cannot be with an actual ball on a golf course. I have to identify exactly what I'm looking to change, do it on video, and either hit a ball into a net or hit a, a, a phone ball into my office over here, and that's the how. So I spent 30 minutes every single day, probably more than 30 minutes, working on those motions and recording every single practice swing and so before that started, I did a baseline to show myself exactly what types of shots I was hitting, where my cl uh, club was being delivered, and what my swing looked like. So let's take a look at what my baseline test showed. Here are my baseline swings, and many of you who struggle with over-the-top moves may notice this ball flight. You're going to see a lot of the ball starting left of my target line and then moving back to the right or fading back to the right. And the goal of improving this is to improve the miss hits. On um, this particular day, I was hitting it pretty well, but when I am miss hitting it, what I end up doing is starting it really far left and having it curve back really far right. And if I miss hit it, it ends up short and right of target, which makes it very difficult to consistently hit greens. All right, so we started off with the very first day and the biggest focus was making sure I got deep hip rotation and getting that club to shallow. And as you can see from the swings day three, I had a really good feeling of what the transition uh, needed to be in order to shallow the club. And day three was actually, I had almost pretty much had it there. I didn't know it at the time. And on day five, I would go out to the course and then obviously try to put those shots on an actual ball. But as you can see, old habits die hard. I'm still stacking the club up. So we just go back to focusing on, again, that deep hip rotation on day six, day seven, day eight just making sure that I am getting deeply rotated and getting that club into a good position and being able to uh, shallow the club. Day nine, I took it back out onto the course again and it started to get a little bit better. The club was shallowing a lot more than it had before. We started to see some of those uh, draws happening, pull draws. So again, back to the board on day 11, day 12. Again, we are really just trying to ingrain this habit of shallowing the club. I think day 13 is a pretty good swing. Uh, I'm kind of getting there and I was trying some different feels because I had a tournament that was coming up uh, and I was trying to get a little bit more chippy feeling with the club itself. But as we roll into day 15, that club is starting to again, get a lot more shallow. The ball is starting to draw a lot more. We're seeing uh, some glimpses of this change start to impact the ball flight. Moving on to, you know, day 17 we're in the back half stretch and we're starting to get a really good feel for what i need to do in order to get my weight to transfer properly to shallow the club out and of course it's not all glorious there are some very bad shanks every once in a while and there i had a period where i just couldn't stop hosling it 
But again, back on the horse, day 20, day 22. And at this point, I'm starting to really get a good understanding of what I need to feel in my body in order to make the club do what I want it to do. Day 23 is a really good swing. That ball is nice and uh, club is nice and shallow. And then I started to experiment with adding a lot more speed. So day 24, day 25, we see a little bit more ground reaction, see the legs starting to jump up and starting to add a little bit more ground reaction force into the ball. Day 26, I started using a little bit of a glove on the arm that Kurt recommended, getting the club into a really good position. And as we start to see on this back half, like the club is getting really nicely stacked behind us. And then we obviously roll into the uh, finishing days of where that swing had got me after three days of really consistent practice and concerted effort. And obviously 29, this is uh, pretty much what I was able to get done after a full month of practicing on these particular moves. And as you can see here, here's the before and after. It is a completely different move. The club is a lot more shallow. Um, the delivery is a lot better. And I'm hitting that nice draw. Club looks completely different at the top of the swing. As I get down into my transition, the club is nice and shallow behind me, which obviously keeps that club head behind my hands and not in front of them, which allows me to really release that club. And I did some baseline swings and we can see right away the transition has given us a lot better control of the ball. Hitting the nine iron uh, 150 yards, I picked up an entire club of uh, an entire club of distance. My spin numbers are a lot better. You know, I'm spinning my eight iron at 8,000 RPM, hitting the ball a lot higher. We're getting that beautiful draw shape of the club, uh, the ball starting right. As I get into some of my longer irons, yes, it's great to have the additional distance, but now instead of hitting shots that are weak and out to the right, I'm hitting pull draws that are long and left, and this is just a new hurdle that is something I'm going to have to overcome after making these swing changes. So to summarize that, can you make a swing change in 30 days? Absolutely. I think you can make meaningful changes to your swing in a 30-day period if you're really focused and really intent on adjusting a few things. With that being said, there's always gonna be caveats, like it's not going to fix your swing in 30 days, right? You're going to move from one end of a spectrum to another, like I have, and that is going to open a completely different door of opportunities and hurdles for you to overcome. Like now that I'm shallowing the club more, uh, I'm finding that downhill lies are very tricky for me where they weren't before. I'm also finding that my bunker play has to adjust. Uh, and also I'm finding that there's certain clubs in my bag, like hybrids, that I don't particularly like the look and feel of with the way that I'm delivering the club. I tend to like my longer, flatter face irons. But I'd love to hear from all of you down that lens. Let me know. If this is something that you enjoy, hit that thumbs up button so I can always make more content like this. But it was definitely very fun for me to make this, even though it took a very long time to make this video, over a month, obviously recording all these swings. I would say if you're looking to change your swing, isolate it down to one or two things that you're focusing on and make those moves, record your swings, and you know, diligently look at those motions, practice some very slow motion in front of a mirror, and just trust that even though you're gonna hit some really poor shots and you're gonna play some very terrible golf in between, that you are going to do the right things that are gonna get you to the right spot. As always, thank you very much for watching my YouTube channel. Deuces, people. Let's keep it moving.